So this is Matthew chapter 11, the scripture for the 7th of August. Now, after having commissioned his disciples, Jesus does some teaching and preaching of his own among the crowds. And we hear from some of John's disciples again, but this time they come at John's bequest. Uh, perhaps John knows that there's not much time left for him and wants some solace that he correctly identified the Messiah as Jesus. And Jesus' response to John's disciples is a reference to several prophecies of Isaiah spanning a number of places in the book, uh, specifically chapter 29, chapter 35 is in there a little bit, 42, 61. Uh, 29 is about the flourishing of God's people. And, and then the servant of God who would bring this flourishing about is what 42 and 61 have to do a lot with. These are chapters of Isaiah. Now, without robbing John of the chance for faith, Jesus is communicating with John's disciples that he, Jesus Christ, has fulfilled scripture about the Messiah. Now, I wonder if you find yourself today or, or have found yourself in a similar position to John. Maybe you're looking back on your life and you wonder, did I do it right? Was I faithful to the right things? I think naturally we're all going to look back on our lives and, and, and what we leave behind with some amount of regret. Nobody lives life perfectly. There's always room for improvement. But the question, how were people's lives improved because of your presence? This is a question that John was asking himself as far as his big work naming Jesus the Messiah. This is a question you may be asking yourself as well. Will we get a well-done, good and faithful servant? And Jesus answers this question. He's intentional about how he answers this question. Not only does he allude to Isaiah's prophecies, but also as John's disciples are leaving, before they get out of earshot, Jesus begins to highlight uh, the, the work that John did, along with highlighting the work that he himself did. You don't trek out to the desert, he says, in order to gawk at some sort of dignitary. You only do that for a prophet. And not just any prophet, but a prophet who's a game changer in the mold of the Old Testament Elijah. And Jesus is lavish with his praise. He, he asserts that John is the greatest of the representatives of the Old Covenant. That John's work allowed for the kingdom of heaven to be ushered in urgently, maybe even violently, and then turning from John's disciples to the crowd, Jesus takes on a different tone and lambasts the crowd's fickleness. They, they found things to critique uh, because they didn't like the person, not because they didn't like the actions. With John, when he did stuff they didn't like, they said, ah, he's a wild man. He, he probably has a demon. You know, he's not eating or drinking or whatnot. But with Jesus... Because he ate and drank, not because they objected to the eating and drinking, but because they objected to stuff that he said. They began to critique him for his eating and for his drinking. Therefore, you know, he's, he's a glutton and a drunkard. No, we do this too, friends. We sometimes critique people for actions that we don't actually care about. We just know we're not supposed to like them. We do this in politics. We do this in religion. We do this in all the areas that it matters and we need to look not at whether we ought to like the person or not, but does this person's actions, do they produce fruit? After they saw Jesus up close and personal with their own eyes, after they saw the power of God up close and personal through Jesus Christ with their own lives, the crowd, along with this region of the Galilee that he had ministered to, denied the glory of God as revealed in Jesus Christ. Even Gentiles recognized this, but the descendants of Israel, the descendants of Jacob, did not. When Jesus talks about his yoke here, he's talking about his teaching. And when he says that his yoke is easy and his burden is light, he's not saying that it's easy to do what he commands. He's saying it's easy to understand what he commands. Because Jesus commands us to love God and to love others. And it's in this that God's glory is revealed. Putting it into practice is hard. But let's not deny the good work of God in Jesus Christ.
I wonder, how has your presence shown Jesus to other people? That's all for Matthew chapter 11. On Monday, the 10th of August, we'll be looking at Matthew chapter 12. May God bless you in your reading of Scripture.